Hi, my name is Lindsay, and today I'm going to teach you how to play my new game, Labyrinthos. When setting up the game, as I have it set up here for four players, you want to take the door tile and place it in the middle of the table. Okay. Next, you'll take the eight starting dungeon tiles and you'll lay them around the door, forming a three by three grid. You'll be able to tell the starting dungeon tiles by their unique design. Then, shuffle all the remaining tiles and place them face down into a square, forming a seven by seven grid. It's important when you're making this grid to do everything face down so that players do not know what are underneath the tiles. Next, you're gonna give each player the following components. One player board, one matching standee, one player guide. The player guide has two sides. One will tell you how player turns works and the other one will tell you what the tile symbols do. And finally, a hand of four desperation cards. Each player should receive the following action tokens. Three hands and four feet. You'll notice that each action token has two sides, a white side and a blue side. That does not affect gameplay. Simply use the side that's easier for you to see. Next, you want to put the rest of the components around the table. That includes key tokens. They should be shuffled by type and placed face down. Next, you're going to put the blood tokens out. Next, place the minotaur die and the blood die within easy reach of all players. Place the wall tokens in easy reach of all players. Next, have a pile of action tokens. You'll have the hands and the feet. It's easier to keep them separated. And finally, take your desperation deck, shuffle it, and place it within easy reach of all players. To start a game, you're first going to flip over all the starting tiles. The starting tiles for each player will match the color of their player boards. Each player should then take their standee and place it on the matching color. After determining the first player in a method of your choice, play will begin and turns will continue clockwise for the rest of the game. It's important to note that the first round, the Minotaur is not on the board. Players have a variety of actions they can do on their turn. Each player has a cost that is paid for with the action tokens. Players can perform as many actions as they want on their turn, as long as they can continue to pay for it with their action tokens. Actions will either cost hand tokens, feet tokens, or a combination of both. After performing each action, the player should then discard the required action tokens from their player board. The different actions a player can take on their turn is move, which allows you to move your player to an adjacent tile, explore, which allows you to flip over a new tile and move on to it, Discover Key, which allows you to claim a key that you have found. Desperate Action, allows you to play one of your desperation cards. Rotate Wall, allows you to rotate a wall in the maze. Rotate Tile, allows you to rotate one of the maze tiles 90 degrees. Heal, allows you to remove one of the wound tokens from your board. And then every player will have an action that's unique to their character. All right, so to move, first you use the required foot action token. Then you can take your standee and you can move to any adjacent face up tile that has a connecting pathway. A connecting pathway means there is no wall or dead end between you and that tile. Next is explore. You discard the required foot action token. You then have to flip over a face down tile. When you flip it over, you must connect it to the tile that your character is on so that it connects with a pathway. Remember that means that there's no wall or dead end. Then place your character onto the new tile. Whenever you explore a tile and the tile has a symbol on it, you must activate that symbol. For example, Diodotus just explored a tile with the wall symbol. Therefore, that player would need to take one of the wall tokens and place it in the maze. The next action is the discover key action. To discover a key, your standee must be on the tile that has the key symbol. Whenever you discover a key, you need to gain the matching key token that goes with that tile. You can then look at all the key tiles and choose one to keep. Place the remaining ones face down back in front of other players. Whenever you claim a key, you then take the key that you chose and you must put it on your player board. Place a key on one of your actions. The new key action will replace your old one. Please note that these two actions that are colored slightly differently are special actions that can never be covered with a key and should always be available to players throughout the game. The next action is the Desperate Action. It will cost a hand and allows you to play one of your Desperation cards. Desperation cards do crazy things during the game. Usually they're played on your turn, but some will specifically say that you can play them on other turns. If you do that, simply pay the cost even if it's not your turn. Some Desperation cards are also played as a reaction to other people's cards. Those cards will have a small text letting you know that's the case. At the end of your turn, you draw desperation cards, but for every key you have, your hand size decreases by one. So, if you start at four and you have two keys, you will only draw up to two desperation cards by the end of your turn. If you have all four keys, you may no longer draw any desperation cards. The next is the rotate wall action. It'll cost one hand and allows you to rotate one wall token in the mace. When rotating a wall token, the wall token is always placed between two tiles. 
and you may rotate it to any side of either tile it was touching. Please note that you can also place it between two unexplored tiles. So if you're rotating this wall and it was here, you would be allowed to move it over here. Next is the rotate tile action, which will cost one hand. To rotate a tile, take any face up or explore tile in the maze and rotate it 90 degrees in either direction. The next action is heal, which also costs one hand and allows you to remove one wound token from your board. And finally is your special action. Special actions do not have a cost, but many can only be done once per turn. So let's look at an example turn for Aki Kios. First, he'll perform his actions. He's going to explore, costs one foot, flips over this tile, moves onto it. Now, because he moved onto a tile with a symbol, he must do that symbol right away. So that's a wall token, and he'll choose to place that wall right here and block Diodotus. Next, he's gonna use a hand to rotate a tile He's gonna to choose to rotate the tile that he is currently standing on. Next, he's going to explore using a foot token. Next, he'll choose to explore again. After finishing his actions, Aki Kios then refreshes his action tokens, which means that he gets to choose seven new tokens from the action token pool in whatever combination of his choice. Now, since it's the first round, the Minotaur is not on the board, so he's not going to resolve the final part of his turn. But after each player has gone once, the Minotaur is then placed on the door tile. And from there on, all players will roll and resolve the Minotaur die. Play will then move clockwise to the next player. So let's fast forward the game and take a closer look at Minotaur attacks. At the end of each turn, the players roll and resolve the Minotaur. Each player gets to control the Minotaur at the end of their turn. To do that, they take the Minotaur die and they roll it. The number of hooves they roll is the number of Minotaur points they get to use. The Minotaur die also has two additional symbols, the charge symbol and the secret passage symbol. The charge symbol allows the Minotaur to move in one direction until he hits a wall or dead end. The door symbol allows the Minotaur to be placed on any secret passage in the maze. The Minotaur can use his Minotaur points in a few different ways. The first way is to move to a new tile with a connecting pathway. The Minotaur can never move on a face down unexplored tile. The Minotaur can also use one of his Minotaur points to rotate the tile he is on or an adjacent tile 90 degrees. The Minotaur can also use one of his Minotaur points to remove an adjacent wall. In this scenario, Leona rolled a three on the Minotaur die. She'll use it to move the Minotaur three spaces. Whenever the Minotaur moves into a space occupied by one or more players, the Minotaur attacks all players on that tile. The player controlling the Minotaur rolls the blood die. The blood die will let the attacked players know how many wounds they receive. After So Straight is attacked by the Minotaur, the attacking player then gets to move her one space to a tile to, with a connecting pathway. Whenever a player receives a wound, they must place that wound on one of their actions. That action can be a key action or a regular action. If there is an empty slot, like the empty key slot, that is not an action, so you could not place a wound there. You may also never place a wound on the two special actions on the bottom. They must always be available for players. And only one wound can ever be placed on a single action. Whenever a player has a wound on an action, they may no longer use that action until the token is removed, either by heal, desperation card, or an ability. So let's take a look at each of the tiles and see what they do. So the first is the secret passage tile. The secret passage tile is a connected pathway with every other secret passage tile in the maze. The next is the hide symbol. When you are on a tile with a hide symbol, even if the Minotaur moves onto that tile, you cannot be attacked. The next is the wall tile. When you land on a wall tile, you may place a wall token anywhere in the maze between two maze tiles. The next is a trap tile. Anytime you move or are moved onto a trap tile, you must take a wound. The last is the Minotaur tile. Whenever you land on the Minotaur, you immediately gain and must use two Minotaur movement points. It's important to note that key tiles are not a type of symbol. So any desperation cards that affect symbols would not affect them. The Minotaur and the player can never share the same tile, unless of course that player is on one of the hidden tiles. Finally, let's talk about how a player wins the game. The goal of the game is to collect one of every key type and get back to the middle door tile. In this game, Leona is gonna go for the win by moving onto this tile, rotating it, moving, and then finally moving on to the door. Because she has four keys, she immediately wins even if those keys have wounds on them. Every copy of Labyrinthos also comes with two bonus monsters, the devilish Medusa 
and the terrible Cerebus. When playing with these alternative monsters, use them in place of the Minotaur. And each one comes with a set of unique desperation cards that can be shuffled into the desperation deck when using that monster. I hope you've enjoyed learning to play Labyrinthos. Remember that you can ask additional questions on our Board Game Geek page or on the Dogmite Games Discord channel. And good luck with that Minotaur.